Outside of Goodison Park, expectations weren't high for Everton prior to the season getting underway. Everton were widely predicted to be down there scrapping with the usual suspects. David Moyes, though, had other ideas. Arguably the best pound-for-pound -pound signing of the close season was Everton's capture of Millwall's Australian midfielder Tim Cahill for an undisclosed fee. The only question was whether he could punch his weight in the Premiership. No worries, mate. The only other notable signing came with a Joe Royal seal of approval. Marcus Bent from Ipswich Town, a much-needed foil for Moyes' 4-1-4-1 formation, who was destined to stifle most of the other Premiership clubs. But the major story of the summer was Wayne Rooney's prolonged departure to Manchester United. He eventually went on transfer deadline day. There are two sides to every story. Everton was strapped for cash. Rooney and his advisers wanted to enhance his profile immediately. He was taking care of business. Up to £30 million worth of business. Well, Palace have been prepared to invest in the hope of retaining their Premiership status for more than just a single season. They make two changes from the team that drew one all at Norwich. Both Michael Hughes and Sandor Torgali have picked up knocks. So there are recalls here for Arke Realate and Dougie Friedman. Even Caviedes, an Ecuadorian striker who's joined from Barcelona of Ecuador, starts on the bench. Everton were beaten 4-1 by the champions Arsenal last Sunday. Manager David Moyes said that he was disappointed with the way in which his team defended. Both Joseph Yobo and Alan Stubbs play, even though they've been receiving treatment for knee and groin injuries. Everton do make two changes, Tony Hibbert and Marcus Bent, replacing Alessandro Pistone and James McFadden. Ian Dowie there on the left, David Moyes of Everton, who is under so much pressure. Pressure to bring in new signings, also pressure to get results. Final check of the watch. We're underway. Our supporters of Crystal Palace go into the new season. Optimistic that they can keep their place in the Premiership this time. But many followers of Everton remain sceptical. If they'll see any real improvement in their team's fortunes during the months ahead. Everton lost their last four Premiership games last season. They picked up just two points from their last six fixtures and they're already under pressure. Palace determined to make an impression. Real Archie has made his way forward into the Everton penalty area. Real Arte reunited here with his international teammate for Finland, Yunus Kolker, who's joined the club in the summer months. One of eight new signings for Crystal Palace. Gary Bertels alongside me, and really that is the key to Palace's survival, the fact that they've been able to invest during the summer, and they've brought in a bit of quality. They've got to bring in quality, Ian Dowie knows that, and the Premiership season starts here, they know all about Norwich, these are the big boys now, this is what it's all about. A long throw there, very nearly catching Crystal Palace out. Real art. Parsley diving in, he offers the hand of apology, but it was a late, late challenge. Well, they're totally committed, they've got to be, it was a late challenge, I don't think there was much contact here, he gets there first, just a little bit of contact at the end, the referee just lets it go early on in this game. Everton with the midfield that's prepared to scrap, there isn't a great deal of creativity in there. Johnson able to get the shot away. Routledge now. And mesmerizing run by Routledge, and he's got the cross in, and Crystal Palace have taken the lead. It's Mark Hudson. It's his first goal for Palace. On loan last season, now he's part of the permanent staff here. And he's given Palace a perfect start. It's all about Rowledge here, the trickery. Gets a little bit lucky there. Doesn't look, just puts it in the danger area. Two attacking it. The frailties again. Just one thought in his mind. He wants to go as the defender, get in the box, gets a little bit of luck. Just puts it in the danger area. Wonderful ball, great attack. And again, poor defending, you have to say, from Everton. Def 
defenders dream at the far post. Great to attack, makes no mistake. Eight minutes gone, and Palace in front. It's a dream start for them. Spirodi, the goalkeeper, sliding out to keep the ball in play. He only made his Palace debut last weekend. Argentine-born goalkeeper who's been playing in Scotland with Dundee. Just listen to the response from the Crystal Palace supporters. Gary Birdle spoke about the need for Everton to have a confidence boost here, having lost 4-1 at home to the champions, Arsenal. But they've made a dreadful start, and we saw a pass there from Hibbert going straight out of play. They need to galvanise themselves now to get back into this. Well, they need to do it. I thought they started the game reasonably well, took the game to Crystal Palace, but those frailties have come back to haunt them again. Boyce. Angling pass for Johnson to chase. Johnson quick and strong, holding off Stubbs then. I think there'll be a lot of interested people watching Andy Johnson's performance in the Premiership. Brilliant last season uh, in Division 1, but this season, a point approved. He's already scored once this season. I'm delighted to see him make the grade. And no wonder that Crystal Palace have just tied him to a new five-year contract. Here is Johnson. Now Realati. Routledge to try and find Boyce. But it illustrates that Palace are playing with great confidence. Well, they've got a good point away from home, albeit against Norwich, a team they knew a lot about. But they've been waiting for this one, the first home game. The crowd are behind him, behind them. The tempo's good, and they've started like a dream for them. There's a handball there by Dougie Friedman. Freedom has won the ball back. He's bent. Just being held there by Popovich. Kill back. Pivot. Has been outside him. Real Archie racing forward to join Johnson. Ball was taken cleanly. And that's a dreadful clearance by Thomas Gravison. Maybe Hibbert can do better. Stubbs. Kill back. Swiftly cross towards Bent. It's Marcus Bent. And it's inches over the top of the crossbar. It was a wonderful crossfield pass initially by Kilban. But Bent's first touch wasn't the best. Tremendous ball, picks him out. He's a little bit unlucky, gets it on his shoulder. The keeper, don't keep he was totally committed there. But there's the warning for Palace. Bent got in a great area and was picked out by a quality player in Kilban. He's the key for me, Kilban. If they can get enough quality out to him, and he can produce for Campbell and Bent, that could put Palace in a little bit of trouble. Kevin Kilban, another of those on international duty this week. Played for the Republic of Ireland against Bulgaria on Wednesday evening. Actually played under David Moyes, his manager at Everton, in their time at Preston North End. who's been a doubt all week with a groin injury. Joseph Yobo is partner at the back, who's also been struggling with a knee injury. Johnson is onside. It's Johnson. And it's off the goal line by Stubbs. Wonderful, wonderful interception there by the Everton skipper. 
That's total experience for you there. Wonderful defending from Stubbs. Saw the danger, spotted it early, and a wonderful clearance off the line. Should have been 2 0 there. Not quite 15 minutes played. What a start we've had. Pull back. Naismith. This is better from Everton. Naismith with a cross. Popovic with a headed clearance. Kolka. Johnson there just had to check and come back inside. Room there for Dougie Friedman. Colton. Not prepared to take on Hibbert. Here's Hall. Yobel loses out. Nigel Martin calm under pressure. Now the oldest player in the Premier League. 48 years of age as of the 11th of August, the Everton goalkeeper. And one shot, Crystal Palace. Johnson. Tremendous tackle by Yobo, the Nigerian international. Well, Johnson causing all sorts of problems early in this game for Everton. His pace, his movement is very good, his awareness, excellent. Gets in the channels very well, easy to find for his colleagues. Popovic onto the goal line alongside Frieden. Hudson also in there. Easily claimed by Martin. Here we see the frailties, no, nobody picking Johnson up, great timing of the run, chooses to go round, gets it goalwards, that's a superb stop by Stubbs, experience, I thought he should have taken it there, long and hard, but he chose to go round, and that is experience defending at the highest level. Also brave defending, but Everton need commitment. <laughs> Everton started last season badly as well, they won just two of their opening 12 fixtures and the campaign ended disastrously lost their last four matches in the Premiership 5-1 defeat on the final day and Manchester City Hibbert confident shout from Speroni prepared to chase as was Campbell and Campbell again has put the goalkeeper under pressure that's a penalty kick needlessly conceded he dallied initially and he got away with it the first time but not the second time Campbell and Bent both prepared to press then this and is the comical, goalkeeper though. has been caught out. I mean, that is comical goalkeeping. That is a goalkeeper who loves playing striker in a five-a-side game in training. Goalkeepers love doing that. You're one nil up. You don't do stupid things like that. That's criminal. It's Thomas Graveson then. Can Speroni atone? Everton have their equaliser, and it's down to a mistake by Julian Speroni. Well, Ian Dowie must wonder what's going on out there. That is the most comical goalkeeping you will see. 
great closing down by Campbell, but a great penalty here. Gave the keeper no chance, guessed the right way. That's a high quality penalty, right in the side netting. And to punish the keeper, he deserves everything he got there. You just cannot take liberties like that against quality like Campbell and Ben. There's no doubt that the Premiership is different to the First Division. It's also very different to the Scottish League. Palace under no pressure, but they've been let down by their goalkeeper. And by Johnson. the halfway point in this first half. Palace won, Everton won. Kill back. He's away from Boyce, it's a terrific run. Osman. He might get a second chance. Kill back. It's developing into a real scrap. It is, desperate defending there, but Kilban is trickery again, gets Everton in there, he is the danger man, takes two on here, skips inside, superb, dead touch him, he's in the box now, stubs his foot a little bit, then there's panic among the defenders, it's bouncing everywhere, Osman battles for it well, and eventually the block is there, but a little bit of panic. Radford's taking advantage of the header, out of defence by Real Arte. Here's Hall. Nimbly away from Stubbs. It shows how easy it is to get punished in this Premier Division. 1-0 up. They nearly score the second when Stubbs clears off the line. Then one piece of comical defending. And having the back in it. Tolka. And by Granville. Shot is deflected. Well claimed by Martin. Rockford's there, switching from right to left. And by Gravison. Down by Benz. And Osman over the top. Ball just didn't quite sit up for him then. No, promising build up play again. Kilban and grabs some great ball again. Ben just pulled off at the far post. Great knockdown. He's leaning backwards there. Can't quite get to the pitch of the ball. Here's Grant. Now Johnson. Johnson does a lot of good work outside the penalty area. 27 league goals in the first division last season. It does create a lot for others. Real art. Radnich. Grant. In by Kolka. Easy for Yoba. Friedman holding off Stubbs. In by Boyce and Johnson. That's where he's at his best. A real predator inside the penalty area. And it's a massive clearance by Martin. That's where he's at his most dangerous here. They play patient build-up. Half decent ball in, attacks the near post. It's a great attack and great defending yet again to get the block in. First yellow card will be issued to Gary Naismith. Andy Johnson earlier. This time his target was Wayne Routledge. Again, it's from behind both feet again. That's a shocking tackle. You know, as a player, you cannot do that. And he's walking a tightrope now. Routledge back on his feet. Hudson with a free kick. Carson. By Campbell. Campbell. 
thought about bearing down on Spironi once more. You can, you can feel the panic in the Palace fans there. Here's Johnson. He will be disappointed with the finish, having been set clear there by Dougie Friedman. He'll be very disappointed. Great awareness by Dougie Friedman. Great timing of the run. The strike wasn't that good at all. He'll be well disappointed with that. Sharp turn by Osman. Everton looking for another penalty. This one they don't get. That looks a bit dubious to me. Campbell. Now Bent. Away by Hudson. Ben Hall. Johnson been allowed to run with the ball. Colton. This time Johnson just overran the ball and Everton have the goal kick. He's still complaining, thinking it was a, a penalty there, Osman. I think he might have a case here, does very well, great first touch, strong, goes to ground there, and I'm sure he's impeded from getting that ball. I've seen those given by referees, and I think he's a little bit unlucky, Osman. And Michael Bam, easy for Hudson. Real art. Johnson. Granville now. Johnson again. It's a Palace corner. He's been very impressive this first half. It's the intelligence of his runs that impresses me. He just loses defenders so easily. Hudson and Popovic both going forward. Ball on the penalty spot. Martin's punch. And Friedman over the top of the crossbar with the goalkeeper stranded. That's unlucky for Dougie Friedman. That's not a bad effort. The quality ball in again. Keeper comes up in a body of sea of bodies and he just hooked it over the bar. Very, very unlucky there. The technique wasn't bad. The ball's come in. The keeper's missed it. Good defending. Tries to put him off and just might have caught his eye. In the past 12 months, Dougie Friedman has been overshadowed somewhat by Andy Johnson. Johnson has scored 27 goals for Palace in the Football League last season. Friedman, too, has got a terrific record with Palace. 92 in total so far. Parsley down, clutching his right knee. But it'll be a Palace free kick. He's hurt himself there, but I think that's another yellow card there. He's come in late, he's caught him and hurt himself in the process. The ref's standing next to it. Why hasn't he given a yellow card for that? He's given one against Boyce for standing still and kill Ban running into him. And then for that tackle, doesn't give one or hasn't yet. season for Palace back in the Premiership and it's also a big season for Mark Plattenberg who here is taking charge of a Premiership game for the first time
into the final minute of normal time at the end of this first half. Parsley limping off for further attention. Radford's just having a word with the real attic. Some instructions pass from the touchline. It was all rather a waste. Everton eager to get Carsley back on. And by Hall. Ian Dowie, the Palace manager, will be delighted by his team's first half efforts. I think so, and I think you feel un unlucky that they're not actually in front. Stoppage time then at the end of the first half, and it has been a good first half. Bent. As he bent the shot way beyond the post. Bent uh, right over the ball there, unfortunately. Uh, bad technique, leaning backwards. But Palace backed off him a wee bit there. And Dowie telling him exactly that. They certainly don't look out of place in uh, this first half in the Premiership. The acid test will be the Chelsea game, no doubt, but uh, they'll be... Chelsea. The performance. Sorry, Gary. Yes, Chelsea next at Selhurst Park. <laughs> Palace had the advantage, but they were let down badly by their goalkeeper, Julian Speroni, who dallied on the ball, fouled Kevin Campbell, and it was Thomas Graveson who equalised from the penalty spot after Palace had had the perfect start. A first ever goal for Mark Hudson had given them the early advantage. David Moyes is still under pressure, but at half time at Selhurst Park, it's Crystal Palace 1, Everton 1. So Everton are looking to end a run of five successive Premier League defeats, and they haven't lost six in a row since December 1996, and that's the club's poorest ever run. Last season they were uncomfortably close to the drop zone. And yet at the end of the 2002-2003 season, a win for Blackburn at Tottenham and a home defeat for Everton to Manchester United cost them a place in last season's UEFA Cup. It was as close as that. But Everton really do need a lift now. The manager David Moyes wants to make a couple of new signings. His team are under pressure, and they've been put under a lot of first-half pressure by Andy Johnson, top scorer in the English First Division last season. He gets in both channels, both sides of the pitch. He doesn't favour one side. He's good at getting there, and the timing of his runs are excellent. <laughs> Wayne Bradford, who provided the cross that Mark Hudson put away for Palace's goal in the first half. Just 19 years of age, a former Palace trainee. Johnson. Now Routledge. His Boyce. Doing him well there, boys, with Routledge. Boys once more. And Hall. Johnson! He only needs half a yard. And he gets it at every opportunity at the moment. Kilban, who threatened to cause Palace one or two problems during the first half.
Robertson. Mason. You just feel the chances Andy Johnson's getting at the moment. One, he's going to tuck away before long. He's had two or three opportunities now, and a bit, a bit unfortunate. with the cheeky back heel. Osman. Here's Hibbert. Gilman is squirted back to Osman then. But Palace got away with it. It's all normally a central defender who's now in a holding role in midfield for Crystal Palace. Former West Ham United junior who actually worked with Ian Dowie's brother Bob at Chesham, non-league team. It was recommended to Oldham when Ian Dowie was in charge there. And now he's followed Bob and Ian to Crystal Palace, having had a season with Southampton. Grandpa. Here's Popovich, left by Johnson. Well, the temp of the game hasn't picked up, but the crowd have increased the noise level. Palace supporters couldn't believe the progress that their team made last season. Languishing in 19th place in the first division when Ian Dowie took charge just before Christmas in the Premiership via the First Division playoffs. The key is, though, to stay in the Premier League now. They were relegated after one season in 1993, 1995, and again in 1998. Johnson with stops. Again, he gets in the channel this time on the left flank. Found very well by Hall. His willingness to run and to work and to harass defenders is superb. No surprise that he was Crystal Palace's player of the season, having scored 27 goals in the first division. I think the noise levels have gone off. I think the Palace fans are very knowledgeable. They can see three points here for the taking against a, a very ordinary Everton side. Bent! Magnificent save by Speroni. It was a terrific hit by Marcus Bent. Well, he's almost atoned for his clangor in the first half. Great save by the keeper. Great technique here from Bent. Just turns on there, hits the target, the keeper sees it early. Great technique there, eye on the ball, foot over the ball, wonderful save at the B. Marcus Bent, a summer signing for Everton. Signed from Ipswich Town, although he was playing in the Premiership last season, having been loaned out to Leicester City. Saw quite a bit of him at Leicester City last season, uh, got very impressive for them. And on Les Ferdinand up front. Well, that's Naismith again, he's, uh, he's already been booked. And again, another foul, how many more will the referee give him? Everton about to make a substitution. Duncan Ferguson is coming on, he's replacing Kevin Campbell. This is his 300th career league appearance. 32 now. But he hasn't had too many opportunities in the last couple of years. Troubled by illness and injury. Real Arty was careless. Here's Bent. Osman with him. As is Ferguson. Osman! Goalkeeper spilled it but recovered well. They had to recover there and again Palace giving the ball away needlessly in midfield and Bent capitalising. Little dink from Osman there. Hits the target low and hard. Keeper should have done better there. 
That's a magnificent run by Kolka to take advantage of the pass from Granville. It's Radledge! Friedman just couldn't get on the end of that. One end to the other, Kolka, the playmaker this time, but Radledge, good first touch, gets it away, but good block in the end by the defence. And Everton then, again so static at the back, Kolka had made his move, it was a long ball forward by Granville, and they couldn't react. Real Arty. Real Arty who gave the ball away when Everton last threat. Hall there trying to pick out Colker. He was so unlucky there. Fitz Hall. Here's Carson. Now Hibbert. Graveson offering an option, as is Osman. Bent. Osman. Hibbert with four to pick out inside the penalty area. It'll be a corner kick. A bit fortunate there, Hibbert. I thought he put it in first time, but take, took another touch, allowed the defender to close it down. Ball skidded out off Danny Granville's studs. Ferguson just on as a substitute, keen to make his presence felt. At the moment he's giving Fitzhall something to think about. And the goalkeeper, Julian Speroni. Friedman's clearance. Robertson winding up another long throw. Ferguson, the intended target. Carson. Robertson. Hudson did well under pressure then. It's a great defensive header. Ferguson bearing down on him there. And that's the whole, whole set of new problems Ferguson gives you. Putting the right area there. Ferguson ready to attack. Hudson knew it and had to give the corner away. Great defending. Again, it's Ferguson who's on the goal. Bent has made his move to the near post. Ferguson's header on. Hibbert with Routledge. And Routledge is away. It's Routledge! Well, he did everything right there, Routledge. He's got away from his marker, he's got in the box, he's done the hard work. Great strength here, gets in the box, they can't touch him, he leans backwards, an adrenaline rush, could have picked a better option, teammates free in the middle. David Moyes keen to bring players in, but there's been a lot of speculation that Thomas Graveson will be on his way out. His former club Hamburg in Germany are apparently keen to sign him. Yoba. Mason. Away by Hudson. And as far as Graveson. He's bent. Graveson again. Wonderful goal. Sensational goal by Thomas Graveson. On target from the penalty spot in the first half. And on target now with a wonderful shot. That is a tremendous finish, but you have to say, poor defending from Palace here. Good build-up of game, but watch him, he gets the ball, they back off, they encourage him to shoot, and shoot he does, and it's a wonderful strike. Keeper, no chance. Bent does well again here, all the time in the world, back off, let him have a go. You cannot give players of this quality that amount of time, because that is what he'll do. He'll stick it in your top corner. Tremendous. Look at the reaction of the... Everton chairman Bill Kenwright. We're talking about Graveson disappearing from this football club is the last one on this evidence that you want to let go. Hall. Is there any response? That was flying too. Well, he's done well there. He's won the ball very well. He's 
track forward five or six yards. Good tackle in there, midfield. Burst forward here. One thing in his mind. Have a go. Leaning back a little bit. But good response from Palace. Here's Kolka. Slipped by Hibbert. Randall. Away by Carsley. Only as far as Hall. Carlos Falkovic. Friedman had a nudge from Gary Naismith. Almost at the midway point in the second half. Everton leading 2-1 after trailing 1-0. That was doing well in the corner there, gets his team a free kick, dangerous area. And the cramming lots of blue and red shirts inside that Everton penalty area. Seven in there. And there's a free header for Emerson Boyce. He's going to be majorly disappointed with that. Free header, nobody knew him, great quality again from Routledge. Where are the defenders there? Five yards of space, just head it back into the danger area, tries to go for goal and woefully wide. Picked the wrong option. Tenacious, Palace of the throw. Not spent now, equally keen to win the ball back. Nice to see a striker tracking back for his team, trying to get a foot in. Breaking the play up a little bit, taking the sting out of it. Friedman played the wrong side of Johnson. Ferguson, away by Granville. Real Arta. Osman. And he's bent. Johnson was strong. However, is forced to find his goalkeeper. Palace at the moment just looking a little bit hesitant. Important for Everton that uh, Joseph Yoba there was able to wrap his foot around the ball. Yoba's been struggling for some time with a knee injury, but he's necessarily been forced to play he wanted to play but he spends most of the week on the treatment table and that is a worry to David Moyes the manager Spironi has shown again that he's not too comfortable when dealing with a back pass or when he's got the ball at his feet long throw is bent surely good save by the goalkeeper again twice now in this second half he has denied Marcus Bent Naismith is in big, big trouble. He's not even looking at the card. He knows that he's off. It's the second yellow, and that's a red for Gary Naismith. Everton down to ten men. Well, what do we say? First half, he's walking a tightrope. He's got away with another one. No way he can get away with that. That is ridiculous. Experienced professional. He's dragged him down in the opposition half. Good trickery here, but there's no need for him to do that. He's not going anywhere. He can track back. Somebody will be covering the referee's got no option, that is unprofessional play for from somebody who's so experienced. A bit more for David Moyes to think about. 
Baroni Stephen Baroni made a magnificent save to deny Marcus Bent. And the ball came out, Gary Naismith was sent off. But look how deep it is in their own half, there was no need. It's a great save here, great volley. Brave keeps his eye on it, and this is just a moment of stupidity on the edge of his the opposing box, and he's pulled him down. No end of people can get him out the can there. Hibbert. Here's Bent. Just overran the ball. He was so unfortunate then, Marcus Bent. Had the misfortune to have been relegated from the Premier League three times, once with Crystal Palace back in 1998, subsequently with Ipswich Town and then Leicester City where he was on loan last season. Gravison. Rob was shaken off the ball. Now Carsley. Stone Ferguson. Slap pass by Derek. And they're actually looking at a better side since they've gone down to ten men. He's hit it. Bent has found a bit of room, as has Gravison. It's awkward for the goalkeeper, and in the end he decided to stay on his goal line. He let Hudson take the buffeting from Ferguson. No finer sight than Duncan Ferguson in his prime attacking that ball at the far post. Caviedes. Colpa. Decent cross. Quality in from Colker. Inviting attack there, but the experience of Nigel Martin helping his back four out there. Marcus Colker, who was on international duty this week with his club mate here, Akira Alati. Both played for Finland in a World Cup qualifier. Finland beaten 2 1 by Romania. Caviedes, here's Johnson, no penalty, he is astounded. Selhurst Park is buzzing. Hudson, Caviedes, Johnson again. That was less clear cut. He's trying his best for his team to get that penalty. The first one looked to, as if he got a half a shout. Kill back. And Mike Gravison. Scaroni out swiftly. And his distribution has been good this time. Colton. Pass again attacking with Burt. Stoney did well. Gravison. Flagger stayed down. Bent is onside. It's Marcus Bent. And that's a third for Everton. They drew Palace in and they caught them on the counter attack. Fool as you like there. Everything was spot on about this goal. The timing of the run. The weight of the pass. Perfect. The Palace thought he was offside. Great first touch. Gets it away from his body. Draws the keeper and then tucks it underneath him. Great ball, great first touch, gets his second touch where he wants it. Draws the keeper and a wonderful finish from him. Concentration personified there, watches the keeper coming out, just slips it underneath him. 
Marcus Bent, once of Crystal Palace, has now opened his Everton account. Set up by the score of the first two goals, Thomas Graveson. Caviedes. Caviedes at the moment, the Ecuadorian international playing just behind the front two. Dougie Friedman and Andy Johnson. And Johnson is certainly sure that before that third Everton goal, Palace should have had a penalty. Well, there was minimal contact there. He's got his body across well. Great run again. Just gets his body across the defender. I think there's a minimal contact on the outside of his leg there. Referee, I don't think he was in a good position to see him. Robertson. It's a wonderful pass to a fine kill ban. He will be in no hurry to get this ball into the penalty area. Robertson happy to keep possession. to eat up time and time is running out for Crystal Palace Watson's throw has emerged with the ball. He might get a second chance. This, however, has gone for the foul on Danny Granville. general impressions of Crystal Palace the first 45 they didn't look out of place at all they were finding gaps in the Everton defense played very well had good chances just couldn't capitalize and the one that uh, Andy Johnson had cleared off the line at 1-0 just before the penalty that was probably the, the crucial point of the match second half they've not done a lot wrong but Everton since they've gone down to 10 men have, have just got back in and they look more assured David Moyes however will know that there's still a lot of work to be done but his team have done their job here at Selhurst Park. Two goals for Thomas Graveson, who then set up a third for Marcus Bent. Everton had one or two difficulties at the back, particularly in the first half. But Palace couldn't keep their momentum going. And it's Everton who have won away for the first time since last December. At Selhurst Park then, it's finished. Crystal Palace won. Everton down to ten men, three. I know there's a lot going on at the club at the moment, but uh, <clears throat> we try to uh, not get too much affected about uh, what's going on and trying playing our games the way we want to play it. Uh, uh, today was a good game, and uh, as you say, it was a crunch game, and uh, was difficult their first home game, and uh, we was performance. The players have done great uh, through the pre-season, and uh, you know we needed it just to keep things going. People were. We're asking, you know, were Arsenal good or were Everton bad last week? And Arsenal were very good. And, uh, you know, we just couldn't quite keep up with them. And I think a lot of things were asked. But today the boys responded well, went a goal down, went to ten men and showed great character. Palace made it very difficult for you early on. They took the lead, but then you were gifted an equaliser with a penalty, really. I don't know. I've not seen it, but uh, well taken. Certainly well taken. <laughs> and the goal itself wasn't badly taken in the second half. Thank you. Uh, it, it just came and uh, was trying. For a long corner. And then you had to send the third one too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is the money available to, to go on and, and maybe strengthen before the end of the, the month? Yeah, well, I hope to try and get some players in before and get so we can choose the deadline. I hope to try and get some in. But you know, when you've got a small squad and you're injured, you have to play. You know, and that, you, that was the way it used to be. We all used to have to play when you're injured and gone. But, so uh, we might ask some players to do that and if they do good on them. But uh, we'd like to make we'd like to make it stronger if we can. We we need that. And uh, as I say, hopefully before a week and choose we might be able to add one or two faces. A good win then for Everton at Selhurst Park, three one the final score.